So an innocent woman in Iran named Mahsa Amini was murdered last week, September 16, 2022, in Iran that's led to civil unrest with a major uprising by the people who are sick of the oppressive theocracy taking place there. And many millions around the world are asking the question, will this revolution happen again where Iran will once again have a democracy? Of course, they had a monarchy before, but will they have a democracy in Iran so people can live freely. So I got a timeline of stuff I want to talk about. Many have been asking me questions about, Pat, when are you going to talk about this? Just so everybody knows, full disclaimer, we're shooting this today. Today is September 24th, which is my son's birthday. Everyone's waiting for me at the house. But this is a very important message because I was born in Iran. I lived there for 10 years. We escaped six weeks after Khomeini died. It was a very emotional moment. I'll never forget the last day I left Iran. And we went to Germany, lived there, and I finally made it to the States. So let's just get right into it. So Massa Amini, who on 9-13, she is seen out there wearing her hijab, but not fully. It's, she's wearing it loosely. Well, the morality police sees it, arrests her. There's videos of throwing her in a bus. Her head hits the top of the bus. She falls in there. And then three days later, she dies. The government says she died from a heart attack. Who, 22 years old, dies from a heart attack? But many are investigating, and some are saying that while she was in the bus, she was beaten, she was hit, and, uh, you know, concussion, many different stories that she has, and then three days later, she dies. So this created a major, major momentum to the protesting that was taking place. But the question becomes, why all of a sudden the anti-hijab, you know, protesting? I mean, did something change? Was there a different ruling yes, recently? So the answer is yes. So let me get right into what happened with this ruling. So the hijab originally came March 7th, 79, two months after Khomeini took over Iran. So the revolution takes place. I'm a 78 baby, October 18th. Revolution's going on in 78. The Shah's in exile in January of 79. Khomeini comes in from France. There's a whole ceremony, all this stuff that happens. March 7, he says, moving forward, every woman needs to wear a hijab. By the way, it was like this. They're not loosely back in the days. Because he considered any woman that was showing her hair in public or workplace naked. That's what he said. Now, keep in mind, that's March 7, 1979. What does that have to do with today? Because over the years, they got a little bit looser and, you know, you kind of wore it, but it's not like fully covered like it used to be. Well, 2021, President Raisi gets elected. Now, what you need to know about President Raisi, he gets elected on August 3rd, 2021, a little over 12 months ago, 13 months ago. On August 15th, 2022, which is only five weeks ago, you're going to realize how this momentum is getting created. He enforces new restrictions. I want to read it to you. Introduction of surveillance cameras to monitor and find unveiled women or refer them for counseling. Think about it, if you're a lady watching this right now, if you're showing a little bit of your hair, you got to go for counseling on why you should wear this hijab. And mandatory prison sentence for any Iranian who questioned or posted content against the hijab rules online. The restrictions led to an increase in arrests, but also sparked a surge in women posting photos and videos of themselves without headscarves on social media, something that has only intensified in the days following Miss Amini's death. So you kind of see now what's going on with the momentum. Now, who is Raisi? Let's kind of see who this Raisi guy is. Just so you know, just a few days ago, he spoke at United Nations about trusting U.S. in the negotiation with nuclear, you know, the whole nu nuclear negotiation they're having. He just talked at United Nations. While this has taken place, his background, for some that don't know, uh, he won last year in the lowest election turnout ever since the revolution in 79. Let me say this one more time. 43 years, lowest election turnout since 79. Many, many, many Iranians don't believe uh, it was a fair uh, election that they took place. Now, this guy, a couple things you need to know about him. His lineage is through Khamenei. A lot of people are thinking he's going to replace Khamenei. And in 1988, he participated in the mass execution of political prisoners. This is proven. This is something everyone knows about in Iran. Everybody just kind of looks away because it's kind of normal. Uh, uh, in this context. So that's Raisi. So the momentum with women is because of what he said on August 15th. So ladies are like, women are like, what are you talking about? We're not going to be doing this. So the courage of women pushing back and saying no. So what do they do? They start cutting their hair. Many of them protesting, they're taking it off. They're burning it. If you go watch some of these videos, they're burning their headscarves and they're just throwing it in there. And this protesting is going and going and going. And then boom, Massa Amini is wearing it loosely. She goes in there and she becomes a martyr. Now, why is this tragic event 
uh, extremely important for us to consider. A few things we got to keep in mind. History of Iran. So I'm a revolution baby. In Iran, when Jimmy Carter came December 31st of 1977 and did a toast with the Shah, and he said Iran's a great ally, at that time, there was no issues in the Middle East. Middle East was peaceful. Obviously not perfect, but it was peaceful because there was strength in Iran, good relationship with Israel, and nobody could go around bullying and taking advantage of people. It was fairly peaceful. So now, Iran is out there. Khomeini sending his tapes to Iran and saying, it's not fair that this man is so rich. It's not fair that this man is so rich. Why should Iran have, why should the Shah be so rich? Why should the Shah be so rich? All of this stuff that they're talking about for the monarchy. And then all of a sudden, an event takes place in Abadan, South Iran. It's where the oil refineries are. It's a peninsula. It's actually a beautiful place. A movie theater called Cinema Rex Fire. You can go look this up for yourself. Cinema, like cinema, C-I-N-E-M-A, Rex, R-E-X, Fire. Cinema Rex Fire takes place. 400 people are at a movie theater watching a movie. Everyone's trying to find out who did this. They lock the doors up where no one can leave, and they they burn the place up. 400 people inside burn right across the street from Cinema Rex Fire. is a police station where there's cops right across. Nobody comes and nothing. Well, 400 people die. This event also happens in August, by the way, of 1978, five months before the revolution takes place, six months before, four, five months before the revolution takes place. Boom. Everybody blames Savak, which is Shah's secret police that he had. And then next thing you know, boom. People said, this is unfair. First thousands showed up for protesting, then tens, then hundreds, then nine million revolted against the Shah. Then Shah was in exile, he leaves. You ready for this? Years later, years later, after this takes place, an Islamist extremist confessed and was persecuted for the arson. It was never the Shah. But the point is, that alone created enough momentum for the regime to fall. So now somebody, if you're Iranian, you're watching, you're not Iranian, you're watching and saying, Pat, who, who cares about this? That fall caused seven wars. I don't know how many people died. We can say half a million to two million people who died. Okay, we can put the number a lot higher that, than that as well. 43 million refugees who left because of that one story that they were able to spin. So what's this got to do with Masyamini? There is no spinning here. This is a true story with what happened. Today versus 1978, there's something called social media. Where in 1978, you can manipulate and confuse anybody and gaslight the hell out of them and say, this is what happened and you kind of have to believe it. You can, for yourself, go do research and type in Masa Amini, thrown in a bus, watch the video, boom, her head hits the top and then see what she looks like in a hospital, in coma for three days and she dies. There's a reason why Iran turned off the internet where people don't have access at nights because that's when people are protesting because they don't want the world to see what's going on in Iran. The people of Iran are sick of it. And here's what's so interesting about this thing where they are really taking notice. Women, it's women who are standing up and saying we're done. By the way, one police officer died. Three pastors have already died. They're standing up to these cops and these people, Hezbollahs that are coming on trying to bully them. And the women, women are not scared. Now, youth is rising up, artists, entrepreneurs, businessmen are saying their their part. People are supporting the protesting that's taking place. You're seeing, I think, 7,000 people yesterday were at the federal building in LA or Irvine, in Berlin, all over the world. Iranians are protesting to show support for what is taking place today there. But will this be the tipping point for the revolution to take place? Because the reality of it is, while this is going on, there's a few things that they don't have. They don't have the internet. So yesterday, a lot of people the last few days have been asking uh, Elon Musk, Starlink, can you turn it on? Can you turn it on? Can you turn it on? Boom. He says yesterday when uh, uh, you know Twitter was asking him, he says Starlink has been activated for Iran. He did the same thing with Ukraine, which is a very good thing. Now we're you know verifying to see if the people in Iran have it or not. Some are saying they have it. Some are saying they don't have it. But the good news is Musk is giving him the internet. FYI, I think the guy deserves a Nobel Prize. If Nobel Prize doesn't see this as a humani- humanitarian type of a you know, a creation where he's given access to people around the world, internet access, where their government's taking advantage of them. I mean, that's got to be at the highest level of humanitarian to help those people out. But let me go back to this part. What do they need? What do Iranians need today? And who, who can potentially help them? And who probably will not help them? 
They need internet. Well, Starlink is hopefully going to help them out. They need arms. Who's going to help them out with arms? And they need a leader. There's a lot of people that are talking different things. Apparently, last month, the Queen Farah of Iran, Shah's wife, said, I am ready to come back to Iran, and people were so excited. Her son talks very eloquently, very smart guy, very educated guy, Reza Pahlavi, and he said a few words as well. Ali Karimi, who's a soccer player, legendary soccer player in Iran, has said many, many uh, different things, uh, supportive of what's going on there. He posted something about Berlin, I believe, on Instagram yesterday or maybe today on what's going on there. He's in Iran. He's a very important voice that a lot of people are getting behind. I think he's got 11.3 million followers on Instagram, 11.5 million followers on Instagram. Daryush, a very famous singer, has said his own words as well. A lot of people are coming out. But regardless of it, Iran needs help. So what can happen for these folks to get momentum? Because they don't have guns. It's not like Second Amendment USA type of a situation where they have guns. So where are, gonna, where are they going to get their arms from? Where are they going to get that kind of arms where they can fight back against the government? Uh, let's think about some people here. Number one, Turkey. Will Turkey help Iran? I don't know if they will. Why? Because Khamenei, uh, um, Raisi, was recently apparently seen shaking hands with Pashinyan to help Armenia. And if Iran helps Armenia, Turkey has got Azerbaijan's back. Turkey's going to be like, wait, Iran, you're helping Armenia. Armenia, Azerbaijan, we're not going to help you. So Turkey's probably not going to help. They may, but they're not going to help. Afghanistan would probably sell. You know, that's being ran by extremists. So what they're looking for is money. But these people don't have money. U.S. is probably not going to help because the last time this happened, when people like from the conservative, not even the conservative side, people who want democracy in Iran to be free, for whatever reason, the current type of a regime in U.S. hasn't helped people like because Joe Biden will be compared to a Jimmy Carter. Jimmy Carter had a chance to help Iran to prevent this from happening. He did not. Joe Biden has a chance to help him as well, help Iran as well. We don't know if he is or not. But there's one nation that can help him out. And it's the most hated country um, in the face of Iranian government. Maybe the most hated or the second most hated, and that is Israel. Uh, Israel is one that could help because back in the days, Israel knew how peaceful Middle East was when Iran was peaceful with the Shah because they had a good relationship to get a decent relationship together. So they can help. Now, what's going to happen between now and then? Nobody knows. You have to think what Raisi is thinking about right now. The only thing in their minds is, you know, you hear day six of protesting, day seven of protesting, day eight of protesting. All they're hoping is for this to die down and literally go away. That is what they're hoping for. But the longer this thing goes, and the more momentum this protesting catches, and the more power they get, and others realize that the people are willing to go to the highest levels today, I think support may show up somewhere. But my hopes and prayers are that one of those nations comes out, figures out a way to, a way to help these guys out, because a civil unrest in Iran, uh, it doesn't help anybody. It hurts everybody around the world, not just the Middle East. It also hurts U.S. So, uh, again, these are my thoughts on what's going on. We are currently working with some people behind closed doors who also bring more uh, voice to this matter. Stay tuned uh, on the content uh, while we're talking about these issues. Uh, we're also going to be talking about this on PBD Podcast. But I got a final message to people uh, uh, in Iran, as well as Iranians around the world, or anybody around the world that's watching this. To the people around the world, how you can help is to create more awareness on this. Share this content. Go watch some of the videos on Mass Amini to find out exactly what's going on. There's some really tragic videos. I don't want to show you because it's tough to watch. But if you got the courage to watch it, go do it and, and raise awareness for it. Number two, to the people of Iran, if you're watching this, man, let me tell you what my biggest concern is. And I said this the other day. Um, parents who have kids, they're not going to share this video with their kids to watch. Why? Because parents know the risk of their kids wanting to actually cause a revolution to happen, okay? And these protesting reading to fall of an empire. The risk a parent faces is losing your child. There's nothing more painful than that. So I totally understand why for the last 43 years, even though there've been many different protests, 2019, we can go back and talk about different ones that has happened, water, green. I mean, I can talk about all of those things, but the focus is today. I don't blame the parents for their fears of what can happen to their kids. Kids, if you're watching, and when I say kids, I don't mean kids like your kids. I mean, you could be 25, 35, 45 years old. You have to know what you're getting yourself into. Um, 
And unfortunately, if it's not going to be you, it's going to be, fortunately, it's going to be somebody. It could be a generation from now, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, 30 years from now. There's eventually going to come a generation that's going to say, we are done. But to say you're done, and if you're going to go, you have to fully go. Um, it's easier said than done for me on this side, sitting in the camera where I'm not in Iran. So some of you may say, who are you to say something like that? Look, I totally understand your position to say that. I'm just telling you I live there. And I'm in U.S. right now because our people fell for a gimmick and the people revolted without any access to media. Today, you're able to get access to media to share your story where people around the world are sitting there saying, this is not fair. Where eventually their congressmen, you know, whoever they push to say, we have to help something. We have to help people of Iran. Just like Nancy Pelosi went to Armenia to show support to Armenia while the Azerbaijan uh, uh, issue was taking place. And they killed a couple hundred Armenians. She showed up. During a time like this, this is where it would be very interesting to see one of the superpowers showing support to the people of Iran. So uh, I support you. Man, I got a lot of respect for you. I salute you. Uh, I think the world who is wanting to see Iran become a democracy and become free again wants to see this become a reality. And the, and the, and the truth of the matter is there's going to be some leaders that are going to rise up at this time that we don't even know your names, but we're going to know your names. There's going to be some people that are going to stand up and say, this is just not going to happen anymore. And for you to choose to do this, I salute your courage. I can't wait to come and visit Iran one day when it's free again. But it happened with a lot of people uniting together and keeping this message going and a few leaders to choose to rise up and inspire others to say, hey, let's fight for our freedom because this is enough. And uh, history tells us this has happened before and it can happen again. Uh, but it'll only happen with a lot of courage. So my prayers are with you. My support is with you. And I'm looking forward to seeing what kind of advancement this will make. So that's my thoughts in regards to Iran. Now, for some of you guys that are not very familiar with the history of U.S. and Iran conflict and you want to know a little bit more, I made a video a few years ago that I went into details on this. If you've never seen it, click here to watch it. Everybody else, if you want to create awareness, share this video with others. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.